Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Today I'm going to be trying a new T5 Buffer Gila fit. This is also for the T5 Gammas, so I actually may have said before that I was going to try an exotic filament for the T5 uh, to use this buffer fit, but I decided against that. I was thought that the tank uh, boost you get from the T5 Gamma is really good actually. So I decided to instead, because the tanks seem to be just so damn good with the high grade Nirvanas, because the high grade Nirvanas, there's implants that really boost your shields a lot. Only thing is, those are very expensive implants, but you get a massive buffer when using those. Um, I decided to go then in an afterburner and in a triple drone damage amplifier, because time seemed to be a bit of a problem in the T5 Gamma site before. So uh, this is then going to make me do the stuff a lot faster with the triple drone damage amplifiers and the 10M and afterburner will also help me do stuff faster, but it will also help me speed tank a tiny bit better. However, you know, it's a bit hard to speed tank with this like ballooned up signature radius we've got with all these like large shield extenders and that kind of stuff. <laughs> But let's see how it goes. Uh, I just wanted to see because I just felt like the tank was just so good in the T5 Gamma site before. I felt like it would be very easy to do those sites if we were to, you know, just tone down the tank a little bit and increase the DPS and speed. And also, the T5 Gamma filaments are relatively cheap. I mean, they're a lot cheaper than electrical filaments. So I thought it maybe would be a good alternative. Uh, the only thing is, like, we've not got as much buffer as we did before. So... It will be easier for Abyssal Gankers to kill us. It's still going to be a tough nut to crack. I mean, look here, 130k EHP with the uh, multi-spectrum shield hardener. And if we overheat this, 150k EHP. So it's still quite a lot of EHP to get through. But obviously, big enough Tornado Fleet is going to take it out. So let's go into the Abyss. Let's see how this goes. It should go pretty well. And uh, like something I'm actually thinking about is that the recharge the ehp per second is not particularly high actually so if we go here and go into the passive i mean it's 136 that's all right in the gamma site it'll be even more but it's not like a whole lot i don't think it, if this was like an active tank i wouldn't be very comfortable using this but the thing is we have got such a massive buffer that i think that it will still be all right even though we've not got as much ehp i think it's like five or four hundred ehp per second tank we've got in the t5s i usually like to go 600 ehp per second but the thing is we've got such a massive buffer that i think that the, by the time the npcs break through our buffer it's going to, we're already going to be killed off ma the major dps sources and because of that uh, probably our passive regen will just take over let's just see how it goes i hope we get a curb tyrannus wave because that's a very good like benchmark for dps also the ved mac waves as well they're very good for benchmarking the DPS. Just the sheer amount of DPS that's incoming in there. Okay, let's see. You know, where is Tanky? I want to put these in Tanky and these in DPS. Tech 2 does the most damage. I'm using the thermal uh, uh, missiles just because often the NPCs that are in the Abyss that are quite dangerous are Triglavians and they have a low thermal resistance. And it, since we're doing the Gamma, I could use an explosive missile, but the explosive missiles are not buffed in the Gila. So I'd rather use the Inferno ones because these actually get t uh, tuned up a little bit because of the inherent bonuses of the Gila to thermal missiles. Let's go and activate the filament. Let's see how this goes. I think it'll go pretty well. I'm just curious to see how the buffer holds. I hope it doesn't just... Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't go, be like, you know, get blapped, but I'll see, I'll see. I'm just, I feel like it's really fun to be able to use buffer tanks in the high tier filaments now, because this Nirvana set really changes the game. It's a relatively new implant set. I mean, it did come up quite a, like a few, many months ago, but uh, I've not really paid much attention to it until recently. Okay, perfect. So we've got Charybdis Tyrannosaurus Rex. Time to see how this goes. We'll take out the Entanglers because they're going to make me go faster. And also the Illuminators actually is a possibility as well. Let's actually go for the Illuminators because they're going to make my signature radius balloon up even more than it already is. <laughs> we've got a Tachyon Cloud over here. Tachyon Cloud is going to make us get very close very quickly and be able to orbit a 500. So it shouldn't be any issue right there and this should go a lot quicker because we've got you know obviously more dps and because of more dps we should have a bit of an easier time with the tank just because of how you know kill stuff quicker less dps on the field mm -hmm. okay we're going really fast now <laughs> yeah, the tachyon cloud is soon gonna finish there we go where is charybdis tyrannus there's charybdis tyrannus okay we'll just shoot some missiles there get here and try to orbit now at maybe 7.5 let's see now how was our buffer looking at here so 180k <laughs> that's still really good a really good buffer so look we've not even barely scraped our buffer now actually in the 
in these uh, like on our approach to Caribbean Tyrannus, which is the most dangerous port point. Now that we've got an orbit, it's really just a walk in the park. Nothing more to think about. Just orbit Caribbean Tyrannus will hardly take any damage at all, just because of you know speed tanking. So this is going to be quite hard to speed tank because we've got webifying and also we've got a massive signature radius with all our shield modules. Shield modules increase the signature radius, uh, and also you know the webifying does not help. And then we've got a bit, I mean, I mean the illuminator does not help that we've got. See this here? We'll take this out next. It's just annoying that I'm locked down pretty hard with these webs. Okay, let's start shooting this. Charybdis Tyrannus, I think, will be one of the like slower waves in the T5 Gamma. It just has to do... Ooh, multi-body tracheopile. This is dangerous. It's still it's all right. <laughs> the reason is because I, the Charybdis Tyrannus has most of its HP in the shield pool. Because of this, Charybdis is going to be pretty damn tanky because the Gamma effect affects all uh, aspects of all, all types of ships, not just myself. So it'll also make Charybdis Tyrannus a bit tankier. So we'll see how long this takes. We'll see if we can get some decent amount of time. What's the... Yeah, okay. This is actually good for like a stress test because we've got minus 50% explosive resistance as well. So this is like kind of a worst case scenario because uh, when it comes to time, like if we do this fast, that means definitely our gear is doing well because if we do this fast, that, that means we can do even faster if we had the minus 70% um, explosive resistance. We split these drones up a little bit, put up these guys, start shooting. Lock up Caribdis Tyrannus. The multi-body tracking pile with the Caribdis Tyrannus next to it is quite dangerous actually because Caribdis Tyrannus has a pretty good tracking for a battleship, making this enhance the tracking capabilities even more. It can be quite deadly actually. But <laughs> look at our tank. We are barely dropping below like 75%. And we also have the most amount of recharge at 25% right here. So we've actually got very, you can see our shields are not really recharging that fast. It just has to do with the way shield recharge works. It recharges very slowly initially. Then when we get towards 25%, then that's the maximum shield recharge. And then when we get below shield recharge, it again goes down. So basically if you go below, you can say like 25, 30% uh, shield HP, then you are in a very big danger because the shield will have a hard time getting up from below there. But when you are around the 25 to 30% uh, HP of your shield, then it will actually recharge the fastest. Just when you get below there, then it will start going a lot slower. Let's see, what's the time? Okay, well, four minutes. Okay, not the best because this Kerberos Tyrant will take a bit of time to get through. We'll see how this goes. See how this goes. Hmm, we've got, I mean, decent DPS, 730 DPS. I mean, it's not the bad, not the worst. It should be all right. Uh, obviously, as you can see, the shield is taking quite a long time to get through pretty beefy shield drifters are known to have pretty good shields it's the way they mainly shield their ships interesting fact is that drifters actually they just they rely very much on like you could say like external elements of their ship like they're very like they're they're very not uh, physical you could say it's hard to explain because the way drifter technology works is the way they actually move their ships if you look very closely you can now this is just because the blurring you can see there's a bit of blurring to do those antennas but actually the way the drifter ships move they don't have conventional thrusters like you can't i don't think you can see any particular thrusters here because the way they work is they kind of like move space time around them so it's kind of like they're mini they're using a mini warp kind of uh, oh i should have shooting my missiles they're kind of warping when they are moving just normally but it's like a very slow kind of warp so to say i read something about that in the law at least that they kind of move by shifting space time around them and then they're also mainly relying on shields so what i'm trying to say is that it feels like the drifters they kind of like have this external bubble that kind of does everything it moves them it shields them when the ship itself is not particularly like a sturdy it's just being protected by this massive shield also got these floating turrets actually those floating turrets that the drifted battleship has they're called lux condos turrets actually i actually um i i really like the look of the drift battleship so i was kind of when these guys came out i was you know looking into it a lot and they came to the law okay so six minutes not a good time not a good time but you know this is the worst case scenario and we would still survive six minutes times three 18 minutes so it's not you know we wouldn't die but it's just it's kind of annoying because you would want to you know if we've, we've blinged out quite a bit you know we've got these triple drone damage amplifiers i would kind of like to have 
you know i would have liked to have this a bit faster but as i said before this is the worst case scenario kind of because we've got the minus 50 percent em resistant uh explosive resistance and the drifter wave which is the heavy shield based uh, ship so it's not like um it's not really expected to go particularly fast uh, I, I did at one point forget to use my missiles, so that could make it have gone slightly faster. Oh, Caribbean Tyrus again! So this is like an ultimate time stress test, actually, because <laughs> just of the way they're kind of, you know, they're like putting all these different types of bad spawns after each other. Imagine they're getting triple Caribbean Tyrus. That would have actually been uh, quite, you know, I had to pay attention. No, no fooling around there. Oh, why, why am I going for spearfishes? No, those are like the use, most useless ones to go for. And after we've killed them, we're going to fall for these guys. Because we've got neuters on the grid. This sh ship is not at all particularly neut resistant. However, it is pretty like, it is pretty tanky even without the multi-spectrum shield hardener. So it's not particularly bad. Even when we are getting neutered out and this um, multi-spectrum shield hardener gets turned off. Okay, let's go with this these guys okay good good we don't have to at all care about the sense dampeners really there's nothing in there that we need to worry about okay mm -hmm. and split the drone go for this guy okay good 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 and we've got a deviant automata suppressor which could be quite favorable to actually get away from because they're going to make us do less dps gonna shoot down our missiles i think it will however shoot down the sleepers missiles as well because i think the sleepers do have missiles or they do have beams okay shoot this guy i think they have like a mix i think they have beams and missiles okay let's go towards the caribbean tyrannus there we go okay let's lock up the rest of the cruisers and go towards caribbean tyrannus we're going pretty fast now tachyon cloud oh there's another deviant automatic suppressor over there let's establish an orbit on caribbean tyrannus actually let's get a bit closer just you see we're taking a bit of damage but it's all right we're recharging pretty fast anyway doesn't really care take out these dissipators lock up Charybdis oh this is a very annoying I hate it when Charybdis Tyrannus does this that they just hugs the wall stop I hate it when it does this because this makes it so that like half the time I'm uh, uh, overting I'll just get uh, I'll be outside in the abyssal depths taking damage I'll kind of manual pilot a little bit around here okay and go for this obfuscator please there we go go for this one now obfuscator over there mm -hmm. good 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 I wonder how this would do in the exotic filament. Like, I worry that the tank will not be enough for the exotic filament, but maybe, maybe it could because we would do the the exotic filament quite a bit faster. Because, we, but first off, our scourge or our kinetic missiles will be getting like will be favorable since the reduced kinetic resistance and also the vespers they do a bit more damage than the than the actual uh, the Valkyries that I've got now, and also the the HP the shield HP of the NPCs is not going to be boosted actually like it is now so I'll probably go quite a bit fast actually then again exotic filaments do cost more than the gamma filaments so that's also something to take keep, keep, keep in mind at the time I'm filming this video they cost about like half the gammas cost half the amount as the uh, the uh, uh, exotic filaments let's see I just want to see how much the DPS will be doing if we go for the Vesper 2s oh 816 so I mean we do Quite a bit more dps they're almost 80 more dps and actually we'll be doing even more than that because it wasn't simulating the implants i've actually got a few implants actually that boost my missiles uh, damage so i'll be doing even more actually so i think it'll be going quite a bit faster maybe that could be a possibility i just worry quite a bit about the amount of you know the amount of shield hp i'll worry about that hmm. we're under we're under the average of uh, f five minutes per site so it's not that good maybe i will eventually try the exotic actually maybe there's a possibility there because i mean we are still tanking like an absolute boss i mean it's a very respectable tank we've got right here the high grade nirvanas really make you pretty damn op actually and especially since we just i'm using the full field extenders twos so i'm not using a purges this field extender just makes us have such a big buffer so the time it takes to get through that buffer is t kind of tank in itself like you can have a good recharge right but if you have a big enough buffer it'll you'll be able to kill off a lot of dps before they even get through your buffer so that is a kind of a tank in itself i'm just quite uh, not too experienced with the buffer because i've just been so used to using active tanks in the abyss uh, for a whole long time actually 
because before the Nirvana implants, active tanks or passive tanks were very popular in the low tier abyss filaments, but they never really did well in the high tier abyss. But the Nirvana implants kind of changed the game. Okay, we'll go towards the transfer corner right now because we are approaching the time it would take actually to get there just manually by piloting like this. Let's go. He's soon dead. Shoot this guy with the missiles a bit. Good, good, good. Recharge the missiles, reload the missiles and get now towards the transfer conduit. I hope we get a fast wave, but you know, this is a good stress test as I said before. Good, good stress test. Okay, let's go to the next one. Please, please. There we go. So basically we're doing six minutes with the Charybdis Tyrannus wave, you could say. Twelve minutes now to take those two Charybdis Tyrannus waves out. And that's average six minutes. So this should take quite a little time, actually. The, the Rogue Drum Battle Cruisers are not particularly long. They're not particularly fast either, but they are uh, not not the uh, not a slow wave, at least. So we're going to use the Republic Fleet Valkyries because these guys are very um, tanky. I don't want to use the flimsy t Tech 2 drones because these Rogue Drum Battle Cruisers love to eat drones alive. Okay, let's get, get in range and start shooting our, start shooting our missiles. Okay, so applying maximum. Actually, no, no, I want to focus on what, what am I doing? I'm the, I just, I was thinking that these guys are like uh, rogue drone frigates for a second, so I was splitting them up, but they actually, you want to focus on one of them because they're not like, they don't go down so quickly. Okay, there we go. Actually, I probably can just, uh, just uh, jump in here because we've got such a big buffer. Let's just do that. Maybe I'll regret that later. <laughs> Let's go down here. I'm not taking the loot because I'm on the test server, but it could be, could maybe have actually been an. Uh, uh, possibility to take the loot just to simulate more because it will obviously take a little bit longer time to grab the loot than just running it like I am doing right now. <laughs> We've got so much buffer. So much buffer. Oof. Okay, good, good, good. Shoot these guys. Yeah, it doesn't take much long, very long time to kill these guys at all, actually. I should have actually gone for the blast grip over there, that blast grip already taking damage now it's just going to recharge shields well actually it's not really maybe they recharge they view these guys are mainly armor based tank i'm not really sure hmm. okay they've got the same amount of resists on both armor and shields maybe they've got like kind of equal i'm not sure okay good that we're actually killing the spark grip because that guy switched over from my drones for a second shoot this guy now i'll just stop here actually no real point that i keep moving hmm. i see my my shields actually diminished there because the spark grip was targeting my drones but it's all right because he died very quickly kill this guy okay but not two blast grips left what is the time doing mm -hmm. almost 15 minutes so i think this was a little bit faster than the kerbis tyrannus wave i mean the worst case scenario you know we took a wrecking shot it's just like oh whatever just this 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 uh gila just this little tickle to this gila and it takes wrecking shots these rogue drum crews they have quite high dps especially up close and their wrecking shots hurt like crazy if you're using an active tank it's definitely not something to just uh take like as if it's nothing because they will hurt a lot but since we're going buffer tank we really don't care oof do you see that those uh, that republic fleet valkyrie took like almost all his armor hp because the shields was down this guy was targeting oof. yeah these rogue drones like i told you before the battle cruisers they like to eat drones alive very cannibal kinds because they're like, they're rogue drones they like to eat other drones they're cannibals okay good 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 wrecked great okay let's go and finish the site so there we go t5 gamma done in 15 and a half minutes minus 50 percent uh, explosive resistance so it's like a worst case scenario and we've got two curbs tyrants as well so this even bad like when it comes to time and we still finished it i mean it was not the uh, not a good time but it was not extremely like borderline you know towards the end it's all right and we tanked all, like crazy actually so it maybe would be a possibility to try the exotics or maybe even something else like uh, firestorm firestorms will take a bit of time to do because firestorms actually they have um like a bonus to the armor hp pool so it will take a little bit longer there to like you know kill the npcs but one thing to keep in mind is first off we have actually thermal missiles which are also buffed in the gila and also the thermal drones such as the hammerheads hammerhead 
has actually a pretty hefty DPS. In fact, are one of the highest, the highest DPS drones you can get. See that 850 DPS. And with the missile implants, I'll probably almost hit 900 DPS. So either exotic or firestorm, I want to try next. We'll see how this goes. The really the high grade Nirvana it just seems to be amazing when it comes to tank. Or it could just be that I'm just uh, getting really, really good results because I just happen to be doing the <laughs> gamma size. Anyway. It was pretty fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video right here. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.